everybody. I thought with Passover being right around the corner that I would share with you today the story of the little red hen and the Passover matzah. So I'm thinking a lot of you know the story of the little red hen. Remember how she baked the bread and she asked all her friends to help her and they wouldn't? So what happened in the end? She didn't share her bread. Well, as Passover is approaching, let's see what happens as the little red hen gets ready to bake her matzah. Okay, you ready? The little red hen and the Passover matzah. The year was passing. The little red hen could feel the change of the seasons in the tips of her tail feathers. She could smell it in the barnyard air. She could see it on her calendar. Oy, gavolt, she said, thinking ahead to the spring. Before I know it, it'll be time for Passover. I will need some matzah for my Seder dinner. And that begins with some grains of wheat. There she is, looking ahead, trying to plan. In a corner of the chicken coop, the little red hen kept a small pile of grains safe from wind and water. She gathered them now and went to find her friends. Such friends she had. Yes, always ready to lend a helping hand. Who will help me plant these grains, she asked. Uh-oh, what do you think happens? Not I, said the sheep. Sorry, Bob, said the horse. Think again, said the dog, a little bit rudely. The little red hen was not happy. Okay, okay, I shouldn't worry. I'll do it myself. And the little red hen planted those grains. So see how she had gathered the grains and she asked, there's the sheep the horse, there's her dog, and there she is planting the grains all by herself. Months pass, the sun shined bright, the rain fell, and the grain grew tall. The little red hen waited patiently. Finally, there was a field of wheat ready to be harvested. The little red hen went to find her friends. This time she was sure they would lend a helping hand. Who will help me cut the wheat? Not I, said the sheep. Sorry, bub, said the horse. Think again, said the dog, a little bit rudely. We're your friends. We're not your servants. The little red hen was definitely not happy. Frenchmen's, I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. And the little red hen cut the wheat. There she is. Her friends are still not helping. And look at that big field of wheat up here. The wheat was ready for the mill. The little red hen gathered it together and went to find her friends. They won't disappoint me again, she told herself confidently. Who will help me carry this wheat to the mill, she asked them. Not I, said the sheep. Sorry, bub, said the horse. Think again, said the dog, a little bit rudely. We're resting. Look at all that wheat that needs to be carried, and they're just not helping, are they? The little red hen was really, really not happy this time. I should live so long, she fetched to see this bunch of lazy no-goods put in a good, honest day's work. I'll just do it myself. The little red hen took the wheat to a special Passover mill where a miller ground it to flour. Then she schlepped that flour back home in a big, heavy sack, clutching to herself, I'm sorry, clucking to herself all the way, clutching the bag but clucking. That's what she was doing. Look how heavy that looks. Before she knew it, it was spring, the morning of the first night of Passover. The little red hen had cleaned her house top to bottom. There wasn't a 
crumb of bread to be found anywhere. Time to make the matzah, the little red hen announced to her friends. Who wants to help? Everyone deserves a second, a third, a fourth chance, she reminded herself. But what do you think the little red hen heard? See, look at her friends outside the door. I don't think they're coming in, do you? Not I, said the sheep. Sorry, Bob, said the horse. <laughs> Laughed the dog. More than a little bit rudely. Think again. Little Red Hen was not happy, but she was not surprised either. Okay, okay, so I should starve? I'll make it myself. There they are, still going about their business and not helping the little red hen. The little red hen washed up carefully. She put a big bowl on the kitchen table. Then she set her timer. Did you know that according to Jewish law, Passover matzah had to be finished in just 18 minutes? There's that magic number, 18 again. The little red hen mixed the flour and water quickly and quickly and quickly. She kneaded it quickly and quickly and quickly. She rolled it out nice and flat, quickly, quickly, quickly. She pricked it all over with a fork, prickly, prickly, prickly. And she put it in the oven to bake. Do you think she did it in 18 minutes? I'll bet she did. Ding, the matzah was ready, just in time. Then the little red hen prepared the Seder dinner. She boiled eggs and she simmered the soup and she washed the parsley and she chopped apples and nuts. And finally, she set the table, putting a beautiful Passover Haggadah at each place and an extra chair for Elijah, the prophet, who hopefully will be arriving. She finished with a covered plate of homemade matzah. The little red hen sat in a chair and waited. When the sun began to set in the evening sky, there was a knock at the door. Guess who was standing there? See, there she is preparing for the Seder, and now she's sitting at the Seder dinner. But somebody's at her door. I wonder who it could be. Ba, ba, nay, nay, woof, woof. We're famished, they told the little red hen. What's for dinner? You have got to be kidding, scolded the little red hen. What chutzpah? You didn't even plant the grains when I asked you. You didn't help me harvest the wheat or carry it to the mill or Bring it back home again. You didn't even help me bake the matzah. So why should I share, share my Seder with the likes of you? Sheep, horse, and dog couldn't think of a thing to say. The little red hen was right. They hadn't been good friends. The three animals silently hung their heads. Look how ashamed they are. And they should be. The little red hen was quiet too. Hmm, now I should invite them to my Seder, she thought. Then she remembered the words written in the Passover Haggadah. Let all who are hungry come and eat. She looked at her friends. They looked hungry. Besides, the little red hen was a good egg. A mensch, a mensch forgives. And why are you just all standing there, she finally said. Come on in. See, the little red hen was a mensch. She thought about what was the right thing to do. So together, the friends celebrated the holiday. Together, they noshed on tasty, crunchy matzah. And when the Seder was over, after all the planting and the harvesting and the schlepping and the cleaning and the baking and the feasting, just who do you think washed all the dishes? Guess what? Not I, said the little red hen. Wow. 
What a lovely, valuable lesson. Treating all people the way you wish they would treat you. Like our story last week, the little red hen was a mensch, remember? A kind, responsible person. So, she shared her matzah. We need to remember to share kindness because why? A little kindness goes a long way. All right, signing off for today. Be good, stay healthy. Bye, everybody.